the class we're coming up with right now is a beginner's class. We used to have just advanced classes, but we're breaking it up and it's a non-certificate class because I found that some people don't know if they want to act. <laughs> they like the idea, they like the flash and the red carpet and taking selfies. But then when you tell them what acting is, they're like, ah, that one. You know. um, and I'm very invested in actor training. So the Actors Beginners course is all about who are you? We're going to do a life plan, HS, family, fun, firm, finances, and it goes on. And if, if acting is in that life plan, then how do we get there? But if it's not, if your priority is not um, entertainment, then maybe you're in a different, maybe you're in production, maybe you're in a different vein of performance. So acting for beginners is all about, is this where you should be? And in fact, we shall tell you if you should be here or not. I'm so delighted to be hosting Oyen Board. I've looked up to her my whole life, and I'm, I'm looking forward to learning from you during the Actors Beginners class. Um, what else? We shall be having an Actors Advanced class. This is going to be the starting point for Yende developing its own theater company. And so in the Actors Advanced class, we're going head on. We don't come being like, what is acting? No. <laughs> We shall dive deep using a play, a classical play, and you shall audition for that play, and the end of the advanced class will be performing that play for an audience as professional actors. So I hope in, eventually this will create a Yente Theatre company that will produce shows yearly, and we shall be known as the theatre company. Um, but this is just starting, everything is just starting. Fresh, well, baby steps. Yes, baby steps. Uh, we have shirts, new shirts that I'm excited about. Vests, actually, because everyone said they preferred the vests. Uh, it says Yende Theatre in the front, and then it says Perform on the back. These are 30K. The stickers are free. Stick them wherever you want. <laughs> your car, your butt, don't get anywhere. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm so happy to have you. Angie Emeron. This is a lady. Man, you know when you're the ass at the BBC and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> Who is this woman from Uganda that like, wrote a you know, radio play? And I looked forward to meeting Angie. And I remember when I was in a room, I think it was at the Dairy Center. <laughs> and everything she said was just gold, and I wanted to get to know her. Then I got to know her, and we were born the same week, so I felt like <laughs> it was meant to be, and she was going to be a friend. She continues to be a teacher and a friend at the same time, which is an amazing dichotomy. Uh, so I'm so delighted to host you today. I'm looking forward to the end direction, teach us how to kiss properly. <laughs> um, amongst, other amongst other things. Let's welcome Angie Amaron. I just wanted to begin this uh, uh, workshop, masterclass, just with definitions. So my first definition is safety. And before we talk about what, what the definition of safety is, I just wanted to know why this is necessary in our work environment. Why is safety necessary? Why do you need, when we say let's have safe sex, um, beyond being harassed, you know, sexual harassment or whatever, and it is an important conversation and we're going to have it, but beyond that, why is safety really key on set. Yeah. It enables me to trust you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, who are you trusting? Uh, boss, co-workers. Okay. So, 
box is a traveling word, and then say leader and co workers. I use it first. Yeah. Okay, so trust. You want to be able to trust? Yeah? Work better. What do you mean? Um, if you do things. Yeah? Free expression. Free expression. Mental health. I'm going to take one more. The first word you said was? Relationship. Something you need to feel safe. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, am I taking the words out of your mouth? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> say again? No, the same story. Yeah. Okay. So, um, say the point again. Safe space, mm -hmm. you, have, you know yourself, you're not worried. Your, your mental health is, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, you focus on mm -hmm. what you have to do. Mm -hmm. to Any more? Okay, so you Anything more before I close this? Any other burning idea? Okay, so like when we when we're thinking about safety in the workplace, a lot of this stuff is internal. And sometimes when we're thinking about safety or uh, safe sets, we concentrate on what's happening to our physical body, right? But a lot, of, like when you sit down and reflect on it, a lot of your safety concerns are about your mental health, they're about your ability to do your work, they're about your ability to, to feel free with your other performer, and so on and so forth. And so when we reduce the idea of safety to um, like sexual assault or sexual harassment, um, we leave out so many other things that affect us when we don't feel safe. And of course, um, I, I didn't put it here because we would have spent the whole time just talking about uh, sexual assault and sexual harassment, but it's a really big one here, right? Because we, we know those stories with experience now. Um, yeah, so the definition of safety is a state in which the dangers and hazards of physical, psychological, or material harm 
are controlled in order to preserve the well-being and health of an individual or a community. The well-being and health of an individual or a community. So if one person or several people are not feeling safe, we all in our entirety are not feeling safe. Um, it was super interesting to me the concern that says, am I being framed? Am I about to be framed for for something if I go to this meeting? So um, that means that all of us are not being safe for you to have that concern, rather than it being like something about your personal individual self. All right, my second, any questions on that? I'm just doing definitions and then we'll talk about what it means. We're okay, we understand what safety is and how much, not we understand, we reflect, you understand what it is. Yeah? Consent is useful because it determines um, where a match with your actions. Like, am I in agreement or disagreement? Am I in agreement or disagreement with your actions? Okay, so that's a really good Okay. What else is useful about consent? Yeah. I think of consent, I think clarity. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other why consent is useful? Yeah. intimacy or sexual harassment close into the contract, so to tell people, um, to give the details of what sexual harassment or sexual assault means, so that you know when you're doing it and therefore you've broken the contract. So yeah, um, um, I'm going to say uphold contract. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. One trauma mm -hmm. the actor, let mm -hmm. us say, or the other man in the mm -hmm. because for any romantic relationship. Of course. And I'm calling. Uh huh. Yeah. Gotcha. The actor now that, oh, guys, it's on rock. Yeah. I don't have feelings for you. Yeah. And I forget the fact that this one's on. Okay. Yeah, no, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Because it had to do with something I was going to talk about later. That's probably why I, I moved it. Okay, all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the ways in which consent is useful, we've reflected on that. So um, we'll have a discussion later when I'm giving you tools on how to be in the scene. There is no uh, consent that says the Lord. Consent is reviewed periodically, even within the scene. Yeah? So if I consented that you can put your hand on my cheek and in take three, it doesn't feel good anymore, I am allowed to revoke that consent. And everybody has to find another way to do that scene. So you can't hold me to something I consented to previous consent. I have to consent regularly, enthusiastically, all the way through the process. Yeah? So you cannot hold me to past consents. Yeah. We have where the word or the phrase boundaries come in, and there are boundaries in this consent. Like you say, can that be the root of that? Yeah, no, obviously. Yeah, when, when, you're, when you're, so what we're going to discuss today is intimacy direction. And what that, what the, the specifics of that job is to navigate these areas. How much, how far, when, right? And to, to, to do records regularly of if what was previously consented, it still stands, right? And I'm just gonna do an aside because I might forget later. 
um, one of the reasons why it is important that the person is okay. And so if you said it's okay, I'm happy for him to put his head on my boob, mm -hmm. right? And then take 14, you don't want that anymore. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for an actor to go back to the director and be like, so, friend, <laughs> this is what is now happening. No, it has transpired that I can no longer do this. So do you have enough so that I don't have to do this anymore? Or you need to reimagine this scene. It's very difficult for a director for an actor to go that way, mm -hmm. because so many people are involved. So the DOP is going to jump on that, the, the, the lighting, the producers are going to jump on that, and then you're going to feel like you've derailed the entire production. OK? Right? So that's why you now have the role of the intimacy coordinator, who you're able to go and say to, listen, I thought I was OK with this. I am now not OK with this, and they are supposed advocate for you. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't advocate for you by going to the director and being like, oh. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, and then we start having, let's recast, and whatever. No, no, no. What they advocate for you, so it's a creative position. So what they advocate for you is they go to the director with solutions. Mm -hmm. I think we can do it this way and still achieve the thing that you're trying to do. I've had a discussion with Angie, and while she's going to continue doing this, there's this way, this way, this way, let's have the DOP in, what can we do with it? They come in with solutions of how to resolve this particular issue. Okay? Yeah? And of course, I've been in situations where people have felt like actors are going to do it as a power grab. Right? Mm -hmm. So then we go back to trust and um, uh, building a relationship and all of those things. How did you guys get into this, uh, this collaboration? And what's the, what's the relationship there, right? Yeah, but really an intimacy director is supposed to advocate for the actor with the other creators. As it stands now, um, very, that is not as available. For instance, for my own sense, I am also intimacy coordinator and I am also director, and I try to put the hats different, but I have been in a situation where I knew if they had a chance, they would have said, I don't want to continue. Right? I knew. You know, and I was stuck. I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was stuck. I was stuck and we stopped and we chilled and we talked this way and now I'm wearing intimate director that I've had. We talk this way, we talk that way, we talk this way, we talk that way, and we talked and we talked and we talked until finally the person was like, you know what? Rather than all these talking, let me just let me just do it and be done with this. Uh, and so I felt I, I carried that for a long time. I carried that for a long time because I felt that I wasn't doing what I was advocating to do. Um, and the, the, the thing I'm grateful for is the awareness in that moment to realize that I shouldn't be having this job. It should be somebody else's job to advocate for this person. And as director, I was stuck because I, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we were losing light or whatever. So I was patting myself on the back to say, I think I stopped. I stopped production. <laughs> so we could talk. Yeah. Like, give me my flowers. <laughs> because another director would be like, girl, this is what you said. This is going to be short three takes by a friend. You know? Um, but also, my relationship with that particular actor and the fact that for her, later when we discussed, because I was sad, I was sad for a long time. And when we discussed it later, it turned out that she, she feels it was a momentary lapse, but she should be allowed, you know what I'm saying? She should be allowed to have a momentary lapse and for that to stop. So I tell you this story to tell you it's not easy. It's not gonna be like a, 
uh, what is it called? Black white. It's very, this area is very, very great because there are power dynamics involved. And not only power dynamics, money and time. Okay? So I'm not giving you cut and dry solutions. Be like, here, and book, go live your best life. I'm telling you, uh, my, my thing always with intimacy direction is to give you an opportunity to advocate for yourself. Okay? Uh, give you the tools, give you the language, give you whatever you need to advocate for yourself. And on both sides, as an intimacy director, as a director, as an artist, be able to advocate for yourself at all times and be aware what conversation are we having. Are we having a conversation about you not being able to bend? Or are we having a conversation about you not wanting to bend? Because those are two very different conversations. And at all times, I have my safety is paramount as a person. My safety is paramount. It doesn't matter if I feel safe with you, as this particular artist did. She felt safe with me, but it's about her safety, not about how she feels about me. Yeah? Okay. Tangent completed. Um, all right, so we've reflected on consent. Um, it's not a trick question, but let's just reflect. What are the issues with consent? I've mentioned some of that. Like, what are the issues with consent? What does, what does consent come loaded with? It's great, and we should have consent, but what does it come loaded with? The pressure to actually consent. Because mm -hmm. there is that mm -hmm. assumption that, that you will, or you must. Mm -hmm. There is the assumption, mm -hmm. general assumption about Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. someone that's, this is not me, this, these are not my values and everything. So, yeah. just the pressure to actually voice it, yeah. which I feel like um, from a director's, uh, from an actor's point of view, yeah. is unfair mm -hmm. because the producer should have voices. Mm -hmm. But there is that assumption that you're an actor, mm -hmm. so you will. You will do it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's so much pressure from all areas. I had an, I, I had an encounter where somebody asked the, act, the other actor, did you not read the script? Yeah. When they said they were feeling uncomfortable, they weren't saying they weren't going to do it. They were saying, I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable. And the other person sort of too. So yeah, yeah, said, did you not read the script? And you know you don't want to wow. be labeled as the difficult one because mm -hmm. in this industry difficult is like you know yeah. red flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What are the other issues with consent? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I told him, let me pass it about it. Okay. So then I thought about it, and then I, I can actually do it. Mm -hmm. So I went knowing it's going to be a case that mm -hmm. I can have a real dream. Mm -hmm. So I was okay. Mm -hmm. But she wanted to make it look like I wanted it more than she did. Ah. <laughs>
This body will do whatever it wants. You understand? Mm -hmm. Even though your mind is very clear that this is work, your mind, you have dinner with this person and their girlfriend. In fact, you love their girlfriend more than them. And blah, 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 blah. But this body will do what it wants because what is acting, acting is simulating real moments so that people can connect and people can believe. And if your mind is telling, is, is trying to project a real feeling, your body is going to fall. Okay? And so I have in mind to box what we call an unconditional stop. Nobody has to explain why, whatever, or anything that's happening. But in sync, they can just say, stop. And we stop, and everybody comes down, and the crew leaves, and leaves us by ourselves. Yeah? So we can discuss what just happened. And it's not me discussing, like, are you OK? No, no, no. no. It's just to be like, do you need five minutes, or do you need a day? I don't want to know what happened. I don't want to know how you, I don't want to, unless you want to tell me. It's an unconditional stop. You don't have to explain anything. We just need to know how much time do you need so that we can continue. Yeah, and those are tools I'm going to give you at the end of the, not just, I don't want you to go into a set and be like, I have an unconditional stop. <laughs> for yourself, you have the language with which to advocate for yourself. Yes, there is a, a fight scene, there is a mother and daughter scene, there is whatever scene, there is a romantic scene, and when you're discussing it with the director, you can say, have you ever heard about an unconditional stop? Can I have an unconditional stop? Because this body, it will do whatever it wants, okay? Beyond the body, your heart will it will fit. like I fall in love regularly. <laughs> regularly. Regularly. I'm just in the screen and I'm like looking and I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> right, am I always known you? Like, you're doing beautiful things in my scene. I love you. You know, I fall in love regularly. So beyond what your body does, because your body is an automatic, autonomous system, it just your brain tells you something enough times, and it just takes the wheel and goes. And you need to be... So it's that thing is ignorance, just general ignorance. Mm -hmm. and as crew, yeah. as a director, mm -hmm. as an actor, mm -hmm. just even just socially, mm -hmm. on set. Yeah. Like just when you're having discussions about consent, yeah. that someone has to verbalize it. And stuff. I mean, some of these things I knew that I can have consent now, but mm -hmm. you know, practically it's later, I can yeah. change my mind. Mm -hmm. So, do, the general ignorance, and how do you approach it mm -hmm. in a situation where you don't want to, you know, to just come up like, okay, now I'm learned, mm -hmm. I know about these things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on a, on a, for example. 100%, yeah. Um, that's a really, like, that's a big issue for all of us. That's a big issue because for some of us, you're meeting the actor on that day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, hello, hi, uh, so this is how we're getting ready. You're going to, yeah, you know, what's okay with you? Where can these people touch you? <laughs> it's like, you know, we are telling you. But it's actually, yeah, they're beautiful. Um, you hear us. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, costumes. Do we have another shirt that we can take to your age? No. no. Okay, we can't tear the shirt, but we will have it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so I understand. Like, um, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky, and I'm also going to say privileged, because I work in what they call the indie side of filmmaking, which means that I pretty much will decide how I want to be done on my set. And of course, I don't have, I, I'll have these conversations with my co cast but I don't have the time to have this conversation with everybody. So sometimes what I do is I put things, I put things on the, where we are, just to be like, these are no-nos. Like, if you're gonna be on this set, like immediately, I'm like, just go read, like, 
these are no nodes on this set, this is how we operate here. We're trying to have safe sets and so on and so forth. So I try to be really upfront about that. But again, it's a time issue. They are here, they need to get raped. What are you going to do? <laughs> you, have to, um, you have to push on. And I think conversations like this are, are important. A lot of us know that, for instance, my AD can stop me and be like, I'm going to put into practice and that you have a person whose job this is. And as they began doing this job just to avoid people getting uh, sexually harassed, apparently the, in this big budget movie, there was a $250,000 miscellaneous in case someone gets harassed. So they can pay them off. They have it in the budget. Okay, so like just to stop that kind of going on and like, no, 100%. Um, for me, I think as an intimacy coordinator, but also as a director, I like to be as honest as possible with the person. Never is never. There's never a situation in which you would accept that. The second one you might have to explain. Beautiful, and you can fall in love with this beautiful man, and for everybody to 
feel that connection even though it's rainy and you don't feel that way about it. One of my favorite filmmakers, um, Luca Guadagnino, he says that he pairs people because he could be in love with either. And I feel like that's my practice as well. Mm -hmm. Is that I fall in love with the woman who's going to play the love interest, and I fall in love with the man who's going to play the love interest. So I just imagine they're going to fall in love with each other, and I haven't been wrong yet. Wow. Yeah. This is the opposite of green. Yeah. Red, red, red. 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 It's called body mapping and it's a quick way to yes. reach your other um, My ears are yellow, you need consent. My shoulders are green, my ears are red, absolutely no, no. My back is green, my back is yellow, we can talk about it. Uh, my thighs are green, my legs are green, my feet are green. My eyes are green, my legs are green, my feet are green. And yourself? I think my head is green. <laughs> my feet is green as well. Mm -hmm. My 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 crotch is red. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Then my, 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 my stomach is red as well. Okay, gotcha. My chest is red. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, Your back? My, my hands are, are, are green, 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 orange. Yeah. 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 You have to talk about yeah. it. Okay. Then my back, I think, is red as well. Okay. So now I know in this kissing scene, I'm only here. I'm only touching his face. I'm touching his face and possibly I can put it put it. Your hands are yellow? Yes. Okay, so would it be okay if your hand because my my waist is green. Would it be okay if you put your yellow hands on his face? <laughs> That's how the kids are going. Okay? So all of these red parts are protected, and all my red parts are protected, and she has only touching the green parts. And then the yellow is something to discuss. And this can be revoked. Take four, I'd like enough with the yellow. Okay. <laughs> It's like 
Douglas, I haven't seen you for so long. Angie, I like your glasses. Um, 
emotional intimacy also has to do with honesty and trust. All of it must be. Um, then mental intimacy, thoughts and ideas, to be able to feel safe and to have consent to share or be shared with thoughts and ideas, beliefs and worldviews. And then also, of course, spiritual intimacies. That is feeling safe to share and receive about spiritual practice, and then to respect and appreciate for to, and respect and appreciation for a broader concept of spirituality. And the most important thing is intimacy in one level does not uh, guarantee intimacy in all the other levels. Mm -hmm. So just because somebody has given you mental intimacy or emotional intimacy doesn't mean you now have physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at every level you have to receive consent um, uh, to, 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 to practice intimacy at that level. Um, so yeah, I'll say artistic work is about expression, connection, collaboration, and the creation of worlds. Um, when a, sorry? I'm sorry. I <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Sarah, yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. From here, mm. you go on someone's set, mm -hmm. start saying green, yellow, orange. Yes. <laughs> and then they can buy. You say you're bringing your guest guests here. Mm. You're wasting our time. Yeah. Our money. Mm. How to handle the situation with someone who is doing it, coming from an, um, an ignorant place? And someone who is deliberately mm -hmm. violating mm -hmm. your, 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 your consensual boundaries. I'm also a little bit petty. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, uh, it's like I told you earlier: a soft no, a sweet no, and a firm no. The rejection we see is okay. Okay. So try and get ahead of that. For somebody who you know they're not doing this, they're doing this out of ignorance, they don't know, you just pull them aside and you say, listen, I, I know this is a tough situation, but I need to tell you the truth, which is, you hand on my back, uh, I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah, but then you can talk about your green zone. You can say that you can, if you're in scene with them, of course you're not talking to the
The woman is trying to see what she can get out of this scene with you, this elbow. Mm -hmm. Or a man is trying to see what he can get in a scene with you. So I always upfront, you know, operate as an artist first. I enjoy being a woman. I think being a man is very, very hard. Yeah. And I just don't have the energy for what it takes to be a man. So I really, really enjoy being a woman. And I enjoy the gifts I've been given as a woman, the opportunities that I get as a woman, but I'm an artist first. So yes, I'm a woman writer. Yes, I'm a woman director. Yes, I'm a woman teacher. All of those, wonderful. But I'm an artist first. So when you approach me, you approach me as an artist who is also a woman. You don't approach me as a woman, right? So when you say ladies first, you are approaching me as a woman. I am an artist. And I will eat when I want to eat. <laughs> okay? Yeah? Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. And then listening. Yes, I will eat when I want to eat. Um, listening, verbal and non-verbal communication. So you're listening at all times. You're listening to the verbals that somebody is giving you, but you're also listening to uh, the non-verbals. So enthusiastic, yes. So that one, uh, that that was to us when I said, are you going up to the room? And he was like, I'm going. That's not an enthusiastic yeah. yes. Yeah. So is it okay for you guys to kiss uh, here? And you're like, yeah. That's not an enthusiastic yes. And as a director, <laughs> as an actor, you need to be aware of that. The yes has to be enthusiastic. Otherwise, it's not from you and from the other person. And then again, regular check-ins. So yesterday it was okay for me to have you. Today is it okay for me to have you today? I'm talking about in scene. Yes, I'm understanding. Yeah. That enthusiasm No. Your no has to be firm and assertive. Yeah, clear. It has to be clear that it was a no that was said. But so yes, it's, it's, it's lazy because sometimes you get the message no, you know, and you're, 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 no, you're, you're, you're still thinking, and maybe there's no time to think. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, you, your no needs to be far. It needs to be a far no. Then someone's like, oh, let's do it. Yeah, ambiguous no just, just result in this communication. Yeah, you just, your no needs to be clear, no. But your yes has to be enthusiastic. Because then everybody is agreeing, you're making an agreement, consent, and you're going to do this together. Um, and then tapping in and tapping out. Um, you ta I, I usually ask actors to tap into the scene and then tap out. So I am Angie, I am playing Mary. So I'm Angie meeting Douglas, who's playing, who's playing the opposite, and I say, let's tap in. As a director, I say, can you guys tap in? And then you step into a space and you become the character. And now I'm having a conversation with the characters in the scene. Right? And we already know what the characters want and what you want as a person. Um, respect your scene partner's option to tap out. Yeah, and you have to understand what you're requiring of them to stay in. Um, I've gotten this comment a lot of times, especially I haven't yet met a woman who tells me that they are, um, what's that thing? Method. I haven't yet met a woman actor who has said to me that they're method. But I have met several men actors yeah. who say <laughs> that they are <laughs> And this is my story. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. Method is a method. Yeah. Okay? Method is a method and that's fine. Um, I, I have method actors and I've worked with two where it's worked for me that they were method. Um, but what was difficult for me was when the method actor required their scene partner to also be method. 
That was troublesome. And so I always talk to my aunt and I say, respect your same partner's decision to tap out. There are some people who like being Juanita after they leave the office. Yeah. They enjoy it, yeah. being their own selves. And they don't want to remain as Maria from the show for the duration of their lives. But you're happy to be John for the duration of this shoot. I don't have to be Maria. So respect my decision to tap out. Don't contact me. Don't call me Maria when you bump into me in the streets. Don't call me your wife. Okay? So again, I'm giving you language to just be able to say to your sleep partner, please, I would like to tap out. Yeah? I understand that your method and that's your process, and while we are in it, I'm going to give you everything that you need. But I need to tap out. I have a life. <laughs> <laughs> I need to tap out. Um, okay. Consent and agency. Consent and agency. Ask. Ask often. Ask awkwardly. Be awkward. The last show I did, I think, it, until it became a joke, where everybody was like, consent? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can have the water. <laughs> it just became a joke, and it's fine, but it lets everybody know that every, how we are approaching each other, we are approaching each other with consent. So ask, ask often, ask awkwardly. It's fine, it's awkward, we will laugh about it, and then we will move on. Language as a tool for safety. Um, for those of you who don't mind kissing scenes, don't mind slapping scenes, don't mind hugging scenes, don't mind being on somebody's lap or someone else being on your lap, don't mind being held in a chokehold and, and being beaten to the ground. <laughs> you, know, you don't mind all of this. Create a language with your scene partner for what it is that is going to get done. So you're like, okay, so 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 when you punch me, then I chalk you. <laughs> then I, you punch me, I chalk you, then you kick me in the sheet. <laughs> so this chalk, <laughs> you see here, put your finger, what, yeah. So we're going to call, call this chalk called I'm not going to die. So, <laughs> yeah, come up with a language that allows you to do the scene with your scene partner so that you're not being surprised in scene where someone is like, yeah, elbow to the end, and you're like, ah, <laughs> what just happened? Yeah, so come up with a language with a way that you're going to um, do the scene or what exactly is happening. So for me, for, me, for instance, I just shot a web series and there are four kisses. Okay? There are four kisses and we had to have a conversation about it. And the kisses are in in degree of them falling in love. So if the first kiss is not the one where we're gonna take off our clothes and just end up under the table. And so we said, what's that kiss? And we called it an apple. Because nobody's touching anybody's anything, it's just a like, okay, right? So it's an apple kiss. And then during the duration of the show, we discovered apple kisses are quite hot actually. So we can stay in the apples for a long time without upgrading to the other kisses, and so on and so forth. But we discuss them, we name them so that everybody knows what they are. And like I said, I choreograph. So we rehearse them. So that everybody's comfortable and everybody's like, okay, that pineapple, not a pineapple I like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you should pineapple fight in that way. Let's stay in this, right? So we have discussions until everybody's comfortable. And then that's going to be what's going to be on the scene. And um, yeah, and our rehearsals are private. And so yeah, find a language, language is a tool for safety. And then I said, embrace the awkwardness. It's 
going to be awkward. All of it is going to be awkward. Fight scenes are awkward. Have gun and work scenes are awkward. All of it is awkward. Just embrace that it's going to be awkward and be as clear as possible with your language. Name things. Name things clearly. A plum kiss is somebody's tongue in someone else's mouth. That is what a plum is. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so I was very clear. I don't want anyone plumbing any other person <laughs> on this set. Please, no plums will be had on this set. And I can only say that because I have said what a plum is. And I've said, no plums will be had on this set. So find language, right? As a director, you're saying, no choking, no cutting off of air. Yeah, this is choreography. At the same time, I always advocate for supervisory rehearsals. So I don't have two people going off into the corridor to rehearse a kiss by themselves. Um, that does not occur. And then finally, hygiene. Oh, yeah. thank you. Okay. Hygiene. Yeah. That one. Point number one. <laughs> Hygiene. Again, find language. What does clean mean? Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to end here. What does clean mean? Does it mean you shower once a day? Does it mean you shower before you come to, for us to work together? What does it mean? And then that becomes clear between the two of you. What clean means is when you knew you were coming on set, you will shower before you got here. So that you shower in the morning or you shower last night is none of my concern. We've agreed that we shower before we come on set. Okay? That's an agreement the two of you make together and you can involve your intimate director or your director for that. Smell good. What does that mean? Because again, you don't want somebody hitting you with a or a bag <laughs> while you're under their armpit and they're trying to, 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 to chop you and take you to jail. And you are in bed with a or a band the entire time. Right? So what does smell good mean? You can't just tell a guy, I think you need to smell good. <laughs> or tell a girl, that please smell good. What does that mean? Okay? Um, again, I tell you, like, I come from a, very, a place of privilege, and, I, and I'm, as I say privilege, people hear money. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that I try to give opportunity for my, for us, for my work, for it to be a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so the question I will ask is, what smell would you like? And <laughs> yes, in my last one, I was told, Rexona, 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 aloe vera. I was told Rexona aloe vera is a smell that can be accepted by all as not overpowering or, or too strong, but it still smells fresh. So we had Rexona aloe vera out there. Wow. 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 And then actually declaring. <laughs> I'm putting the mic down. <laughs> and then uh, declaring if you're going through something. You know, I just, I'm just healing from some cough, some <laughs> malaria, <laughs> some whatever. So you're not communicating your communion and what is it called? Being sharing. Your jumps with other people. Yeah, you communicate to your sick partner, don't get too close to me. And I will just um, yeah. yeah, so if it's a case, what do we do about it? Yeah. We all want to keep our jumps to ourselves. I yes, I do I do um wash. I do a trip on Yes. Um, I'm, they don't even have a question. Right? Oh, yeah. We can have a question on one-on-one -on -one basis. 